So we all hear that Alaska is the biggest state in the United States. And a lot of times I see like images uh, where they compare Alaska with the United States in size. And a lot of times what you're seeing is um, people taking, for example, uh, a Mercator projection of Texas and put on Alaska. And then and, you know, I've seen T-shirts like this from uh, some people who say, hey, look how cute Texas is inside Alaska. But in reality, um, Texas is not that much smaller than Alaska. It is smaller, of course, um, uh, much smaller than Alaska, but not on this scale. And you can see this if, if you were to take um, Texas and actually project it in the northern latitudes, it would be having a size more like this. And so in order to understand this a little bit better, we're going to look at the uh, this uh, NGIS with ArcGIS Pro. And so I have here ArcGIS Pro that I got launched up. And what I want to do is I want to make a, um, a map where we can compare those two things. And if we compare, if we go here and just make a blank uh, map, I'm going to go here and I'm going to call this um, Texas V S Alaska. And I'm going to go put this, choose my folder I want to put this in. M and GIS. And I'll go ahead and let this create a new folder. And I'll make one called TX vs. Alaska in there. Uh, when I create this folder, the first thing you're going to see, I mean this project, the first thing you're going to see is a, a map with a base map. And if we look here at the United States, we can kind of uh, zoom out a little bit. And we can see here in the Mercator projection the great difference between Alaska size and United States size. Whenever you compare this, it looks you know, like it could be almost like the whole United States. Whenever we look at different projections, though, we get a different um, different story. So the Mercator projection does a great job at preserving directionality. And you can see here north is always north, no matter where you are. But if you use different projections, ones that are used to preserve um, area by going into the map properties and into the coordinate systems, um, you can see here that there's these uh, conical projections, which are really good at preserving area. And uh, those were made by a guy named Albers. And so if we go to Albers and look under projected uh, Nash, uh, continental North American, we can see here that we can find a North American continental um, equal area Albers. This projection here will actually compare the three, uh, the, the you'll be able to compare the area of of anywhere in that projection but what you're going to notice is that directionality is not preserved anymore so you can see here for example north is making a line like this over here but you go to texas north is still correct and this is just because with a conical projection you don't preserve directionality but you do preserve area and so now if i compare alaska here its size to texas you can see that of course it is bigger um, but it, it has a it has much, uh, you know, not as m many times bigger. So this is all right now. We're just looking at this and talking about this conceptually. How about let's try to put some numbers behind this and actually calculate the area in different projections. Uh, so in order to do this, we'll need a GIS um, file, a data file, shape file. And we're going to find that on the Internet. And so uh, my little trick to the Internet is actually I just go here to the help launches up the internet browser <laughs> so that's pretty cool so anyways once I'm on here I'm going to go to the um, US Census they have a, a file uh, called tiger uh, tiger products which is a, um, a program from the United States Census that maps all the boundaries uh, and so if I go here to the tiger line shape files from the census you're gonna find shape files that have all the political boundaries for the United States and so if I go here to the web interface, um, you can see here that there is a states and equivalents and the equivalents being territories, like for example, Puerto Rico and Guam. So I'm gonna choose states and this is gonna actually give me a shape file for the United States, all the different state boundaries. So I'm gonna go and download that national file. This again is gonna download as a zip file. So a zip file, remember, is compressed folder these do not open directly in ArcGIS Pro. So if I want to bring this into ArcGIS, I'm going to have to actually open this up and extract it. Another thing to remember is that shapefiles themselves aren't just this one .shp file that might have a lot, you know, big size on it, but the other files that are associated with it are also important. Things like the attribute table in the DBF or the PRGA projection file or these other associated files that uh, Arc 
uh, GIS Pro uses to read this. So this is actually all composed into one file in reality. So we're going to hit here on the compression and we're going to extract all the files. We're going to extract this into that same folder that we've been working in. If I do that, then the thing is if I extract it into the same folder, then it's going to actually be already available in my home folder. Um, so if I go ahead and extract that, you can see here that folder has my ArcGIS project, but now it has this shape file. If I go into my ArcGIS Pro and I look into my catalog, and if you don't see your catalog there, you can always click on view and say catalog pane, or you can choose catalog view if you prefer the bigger viewpoint right here. If I go into my folders, you'll see my Texas versus Alaska folder. I have my, now my shape file. Okay. Um, this shape file, if I'm not seeing it here, I might have extracted it into the wrong place. If that's the case, that's fine. If you go here to the folders, you can always add in a new folder connection. And then I can go, for example, and add in anywhere on my computer. So I can just add in the downloads folder or whatever, and then go and find that file wherever it's located. So anyways, this is the file I want to use. Um, I'm going to right click it and go ahead and add to uh, the, my current map. So it's going to go over here. And now we'll see that it's been added in to this map. Um, if I look into the coordinate system information for that map, uh, for this GIS file that we downloaded, since it came from the United States Census and the United States government, what I'm suspecting is that it's in unprojected NAD 1983. If I go here into the uh, source information and look at the spatial reference, you'll see here that my, sus my, suspe my suspicions were true. NAD 83, angular units, degrees, and an unprojected coordinate system is not a good coordinate system to do any kind of calculations in. What I want to do uh, now is um, I'm basically wanting to calculate the area of the states, Alaska and the Texas, and see what those, area cal those areas are for them. If I look into the layers themselves and I put it into this NAD 83, you can see why this is not a very good projection. You saw things kind of get squished and so forth. This projection is not, a, well, it's not really a projection. It's just a coordinate system with the Cartesian coordinates being uh, explained here by X and Y. So this is not a good coordinate system. Now, I want to calculate area. And in order to calculate area, I need to project this data. And I need to put it into a projection, any projection. Um, that way I can actually start using the tools for area calculations. The way I project or change a projection in ArcGIS is I use the project tool. And so if I go over to my analysis and I go and check out the tools, over here I'll be able to get this geoprocessing pane and from here I can type in project. Now if I look at here projection, this projects the spatial data from one coordinate system to another. This is what I want. I am a coordinate system NAD83 and I want to be into a projected coordinate system. I would be very careful and never use define projection. Um, the only reason why you'd ever use define projection is if you have a troubleshooting problem where the projection actually gets lost on your data and you need to overwrite. That does not convert. So for example, this unit here is in degrees and I want to get it converted into, uh, into something else. I use project. Now, if I want to overwrite, I use define projection. And to imagine this, say someone told you something's in 12 inches. And I said, okay, convert that to feet. You know to divide 12 inches by 12, and then you say that's one foot. That's what project does. Now, define projection says convert that to feet. It says overwrite that into feet. So 12 inches become 12 feet. So you can see how that would be a big problem. The same things happen with coordinate systems. So I'm going to go ahead and run um, project. I'm going to use my drop down menu to choose my file directly from my table of contents. Of course, I can always click on here and look for it. It's coming in as a North American NAD 83. So North American data 1983. I'm going to have to output that. And so I'm going to output that onto uh, my geo database that I'm working in. That's fine. And my output put coordinate system is where this is, gets a little interesting. I need to choose something from the projected coordinate systems in order to calculate, make calculations of area. So I'm going to go here to projected and I'm going to choose here North American. Uh, great. And I'm going to just choose one of the projections here. I think I'm going to go with the continental, uh, uh, net, yeah, continental North American Albers equal area conic, this one. Okay. This is an equal area projection for all North America. 
So this would be the proper way to calculate the area for anything. I would use the equal area projection. So I hit OK. Now that is going to uh, run this and convert it with this one into project. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run. So that's going to run the background now. As that's running, when it's done, it's going to automatically add it to my project. So you can see here I added it to my project. Since I've added this one to my project to, to avoid confusion, I'm going to go ahead and remove this one. I don't need this anymore. I'm just going to remove it. Okay. Now, if I go into here and open the attribute table, or let's see the properties, let's verify that the projection actually went through. I can go here to source and spatial reference, and I can see here North American Albers equal area, and now our linear units feet. So now we're good to go. If I want to see what that would look like, it's just going to go back to how it looked like before. If I scroll up to the very top, I can quickly uh, change layers, uh, uh, projections based off layer by just going to layers. And I can say I want to use this one now. I'm going to go ahead and favorite that as well. And I'm going to go ahead and favorite the uh, web mercator as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now I can see what this looks like. And back to my conical projection with nice equal area. Now, what the goal that I want to do with this is I want to actually calculate the area of each one of these states. And the way I'm going to calculate areas is that I'm going to open up the attribute table. When I open up the attribute table here, you'll see that it comes with the attributes that I got from the United States Census, including official area of water, official area of land, and so forth. Um, but I want to do the calculations myself. And if I scroll over here, I'm going to ignore this shape area, shape length, and I'm going to actually make my own field. So I'm going to click here, add a field. The goal that I want to do is I want to calculate this in Albers to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to call this one area Albers. Okay. And um, if I go, I want to make sure that my data type is a double. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and save. This is a little bit weird because the save dialog is up here at the top. So I have to hit save, and then that's going to actually apply those changes. And now in my uh, attribute table, if I scroll over, you'll see now I have a new column called Albers Area. Right now it's set as null because it doesn't know what it wants me. I, I haven't told the computer what I want to do with it. So I want to calculate area. If I right-click that column and I say calculate geometry, that's going to give me the ability to calculate area. And so um, what I want to do is I want to take that Albers area Albers and the property that I want to calculate is area. Okay. The area unit that I want to use, I can use whatever I want. So I'm just want to be consistent. So I'm going to go with square meters. Okay. And the coordinate system, this is what's important. Remember? So I want to use the, uh, current map coordinate system, or it can be the projected coordinate system, the one that's from the uh, shape file because it's Albers. So if I hit OK on that, you'll see that it says North American Albers equal area conic. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this, and that's going to actually do the calculation here, showing to me uh, what each, uh, what the area is for each state. Okay, so I went through, and now if I go ahead and expand that, and how about let me also sort it uh, descending. I can see that the top state, the largest state out there is Alaska. And if I click here, I can see that it will highlight Alaska for me. Now, the second largest state is Texas. So I click on Texas. You can see it highlights Texas. And I can see here from those, um, those calculations what the values are. A little bit hard to read. Uh, if I want, I can also go in here and I can change some of the uh, formatting of the field and uh, actually get it to um, to change to have it uh, show the um, the decimals and so forth if I go here number format right now sets to numeric but there's there's some options here uh, for it anyways we're just gonna skip that for now but anyways I can see here the numbers are one seven something right and I always copy those uh, numbers as well and read them but if I look at it I can see that uh, 172 divided by 69 is about, or this 172 divided by 70 will give me approximately the amount of times bigger that Alaska is, is than Texas. So if I go here to Google and I say 172 divided by 70, I get here that Alaska is 2.45 times bigger 
than Texas, okay? And this is the, the right answer. These are the right area calculations. So Alaska is much bigger than Texas. It's about two and a half times bigger than um, Texas. Now let's see what happens whenever we make the, mis make the same calculation in a different, uh, different projection. So if I go here to my properties again on my map and I go and change the coordinate system now from North American equal area conic Albers, I want to change that to the Mercator projection that we're, uh, that we're more uh, familiar with. We can see here that Alaska looks much bigger than Texas. And so I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm going to add a new field. And in that new field, I'm gonna call this one area Mercator. I'm just gonna be a little bit shorter and just to call it Mer. Uh, and then again, for the data type, I'm gonna choose here a double, okay? Now that I chose a double, I go ahead and hit save. That's going to go ahead and save out and the same thing. It went and created a new column at the end of my attribute table that's set to null. Now, if I go into my area, let's go ahead and clear my selection to make sure I do calculations on the entire thing. If I go over to my area and then I go and do the calculate geometry, I'm going to choose air Merc. I want to calculate the area again. And in the coordinate system, this time I'm going to choose, oh yeah, so I'm gonna do square meters again. And then in the coordinate system, I'm gonna choose the current map. When I choose current map, that actually makes it change it over to Mercator, okay? So this is the Mercator one. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And let's see what the area is when we calculate with Mercator. So this is going through, let's see what happens. And here we go. Uh, and we have our answers. So, okay, now if I go ahead and I expand this, we still have Alaska up on top, okay? And we have Texas as the second largest state, but because Alaska is closer to the poles, the exaggeration of its size is gonna be much more. So if I look here, I see 901, okay? Let's say 902, and here we have a 96. So let's go ahead and go back over to Google, and this time we're gonna type 901 divided by 96 and I'm just being quicker about the you know I could type the whole number if I wanted but I'm just typing the, the last part so then I can get the you know general idea it's not going to change much the the value but here we see now we have 9.3 times so in the Mercator projection ta uh, Alaska is 9.4 times larger than Texas while in the equal area projection Alaska is two and a half times larger than Texas so it's a huge difference when you think about it from nine times bigger to two and a half bigger. So that's, that's a big difference that we're looking at just because of the projection that we're working with. Now, the issue that comes up is that whenever you're trying to make maps, especially on the internet, this might be the nice projection to use because it all kind of squares out quite nicely. And it's a projection that we're used to while the Albers, you can see the problems there when we're working with Albers. Um, yes, it preserved area. Great. But whenever we were using it, it's a it's a cone, you know. So you imagine you're providing this as your as your uh, map to people. They're gonna be like, "What's going on here? Why is there a big hole in the top and there's a cone?" So um, there are there is some other projections out there you could say kind of like that do the job kind of well, but not perfectly well. And one of the ones out there that's good for global display is called Robinson projection. It's uh, made by a old Madison, Wisconsin professor named Arthur Robinson. And it's the one that was being used for um, Rand McNally. Um, so like, let's see here if we type uh, Rand McNally. Now they're calling it a technology company, but you know, before it was a, a map, uh, map company. And um, they had their own little um, logo, which they would be using the uh, Mercator projection. So let's see if we can find an old logo for it not finding it too bad. But um, anyways, you would have here um, the Mercator, uh, that's, that's right, Mercator, the Robinson projection. Maybe if I type Rand McNally, Robinson might come up. Okay, yeah, this is nice. So this is the one that they've, they kind of commissioned this geography professor to make for them. And they were like, this is considered, you know, the modern idea, the best display projection just to see a map up on you know a full full map of the world um you get the projection you get uh kind of okay 
preservation of north. You get okay preservation of area. You get to see global display too. You understand that the world is round, not flat, like a you know, like on the Mercator projection. So it's it's kind of limiting um, errors in the northern and southern latitudes. So it's kind of like the kind of you know, okay projection, compromise projection versus something like this, where it's like you know, you have major distortion in the latitudes. Okay, so that's the Mercator projection that we just um, that we just saw and calculate that it was 9.5 times so let's try with the um robinson projection so i'm going to go ahead and check out uh robinson and if i type in robinson into my coordinate system and i can look here there is a world projection with robinson world i'm going to go ahead and add that to my favorites as well and hit ok and you'll see my map automatically change over to that robinson projection and you can see here um same projection that we just saw on the on the internet um, but now we can see what's going to happen with the area. So how did this compromise projection work, uh, pan out on area preservation? So let's go ahead and make a new field. We're going to call this one area Robinson. I'm just going to call it area Rob. Okay. And then over here in the, the data type, I'm going to choose that double. Okay. And just remember I have to hit save up here at the top. That's going to actually save and create my uh, new column I go over to my projection I scroll over there it is and let's do that geometry calculation again so calculate geometry and then here we're going to choose our input uh, features it should already be chosen area Robinson great and then we're going to choose area here and the coordinate system again oh sorry the area unit is going to be in square meters and the coordinate system we're going to choose the current map um, truly you can use whatever area units you want as long as you're consistent across all three um, I hit OK it goes through and does the calculation and now we can see here the differences between Alaska and Texas so let this uh, go through still thinking about it almost there great and so we got it and now we can uh, go ahead and expand this and be able to see what the number is and so now we can see here from the number we have 216 versus um, 63, okay? So let's go back over to our Google calculation that we were doing earlier, and let's type 216 and divide that by 63. And we see that Robinson is showing that Alaska is 3.4 times bigger than Texas. So. The big thing to know here is that no matter what you're choosing, you're getting different answers. I choose Robinson, I choose equal area projection, or I'll choose a um, Mercator projection. I'm getting all different answers. And what you have to be very careful about is that you choose the right one. Um, one thing that did come out with ArcGIS Pro that's uh, that I'm pretty happy with is geodesic um, calculations. So now you can actually calculate area based off of the model that you're using for the earth. And so I'm gonna try that out here with the fields. Uh, I haven't done it before, and let's see what it got going on. So I click here, add new field. I'm gonna call this one area geo. So supposedly, in theory, this should be the most accurate um, area. So let's see what we get here when we change this over to a double. And go ahead, I'm gonna save that. And then when I go back to that calculation, instead of choosing a projected coordinate system, I'm gonna choose area geodesic and see what happens. So I'm gonna scroll over here and I'm gonna calculate the geometry. And uh, over here, it's gonna be thinking. Okay, almost. And if I go here to the property, I'm gonna choose area geodesic. This shouldn't matter now what projection I'm using. It should ask me more about what uh, coordinate system do I wanna use. And so I'm gonna use here square, uh, let me change that to square meters good and then in the coordinate system I want to use um, NAD 83 I'm going to use the coordinate system uh, that we got the data in okay so I'm gonna say geographic coordinate system North America and I'm going to choose here North American datum 1983 okay why am I missing this Oh, maybe I have to choose USA Territories. There we go. North American Data in 1983. And I hit OK. 
So that thinks, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Let's see what we get going. So this is calculating now, it's thinking about it. And uh, it's, it's probably gonna be the same as this shape area that came earlier, but let's see what we get. So we scroll over, let's make it big. And we have here our numbers, 172. So far it's looking very similar to my equal uh, Albers projection. There's a small difference there, you see that? But in general, it's about the same. So let's say 172 divided by 70, which basically is what we had here, 172 divided by 70. So you can see that the geodesic is actually coming out to the, very close to that equal area, Albers proje projection, which is very interesting. Okay, so now we've done some cool calculations. We understand some cool stuff. Now let's communicate what we just learned uh, and make a map out of it so people can actually follow along and see from our composition what we've learned. Right now we learned that area changes based off of the projection you're using and that you need to be careful and choose the right projection or you need to calculate area and geodesic uh, off of the geodesic which is saying I'm going to calculate directly off the model of the earth that we're using which could be for example North American NAD 83, North American data 1983 or it could be the world geodetic system 1984 which is more popular worldwide um, but I would say let's make a map showing this um, one thing I want in the map is maybe to highlight Alaska versus Texas and when you use that as a way to show that Alaska and Texas is uh, how we're going to exhibit this difference using the two largest states of the United States and how much they vary in area uh, relation uh, compared to each other. And so the way I'm going to do this and <laughs> let me get my zoom to work. I have I always have a problem zooming in, in RGS Pro. That's why I like using this shift button I push shift and actually draw a box around what I want to see and then it makes it easier for me to zoom in on what exactly I want to see now I want to make a subset of Alaska and Texas and I know those are the biggest so I can select those by clicking and then shift clicking the second one have those two actually selected and then if I right click this I have an option here under the selection menu um, not seeing it here uh, there it is selection menu and then I say here uh, make a layer from selected features what this does is actually create a second layer from them which I can do some cool stuff like for example uh, make it a different color and so I'm gonna go with like uh, maybe this uh, black outline and then switch it over to um, properties and I want the color fill to be hmm, let's see maybe a dark let's go with the dark gray I'm gonna go with a, a kind of cool gray looking map why not try to make it look modern um, you see how my dark outline didn't come through that's because my things my my uh, features are still selected if I want to get rid of that selection that I'm seeing right there I can go here to the um, uh, selection under map and then here there's a clear button so I click clear and that clears out those selections so I can see what's going on um, for underneath uh, that if I double click here I think I'm going to change this I'm going to put no color for the outline and for this I'm going to take a kind of a light gray look and kind of give it kind of like a cool uh, dark uh, dark mode look or something to see if that actually happens or not hit apply and that kind of goes through and you kind of see what going on over here and then for the base map, I could probably go and actually change out my base map. And I'm going to go with, um, let's say, hmm, dark canvas. Let's see. Um, I'm going to try this dark canvas one. So it's got human geography dark camp canvas. I wonder, let's try that one. I haven't tried that one before. Let's see what this looks like. Um, what's nice about this one is that I can go here and maybe take off the labels. Um, that's kind of cool. And so now I'm having kind of like a dark canvas, but then I'm able just to select what I want off of that. So I kind of like that. Okay, so if I go now and let's say I zoom to the whole map of the world, uh, so I can just actually click on this globe button. I can get a whole map of the world and I kind of see what's going on. Um, hmm, maybe it's, it's very dark. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's too dark even for my, my tastes. Uh, but let's, let's just stick with it. Why not? Okay, so anyways, here uh, we have, uh, well, actually, you know what we can do? Maybe this we can, instead of doing a dark outline, let's do a white outline and see how that pops out. 
Oh, okay, I kind of like that. Okay, so we'll we'll leave it alone now. So anyways, I got my map. I'm happy with it. And I'm going to start trying to communicate this with a uh, map layout. And my idea for a map layout is, is that I want to go here and actually use a letter map and show all three different projections at the same time. So um, I'm going to go and put, dock this up here because it would be easier to see. And, um, and so in my map, lay, my map itself, I want to put uh, the map frame now for um, the uh, Robinson projection, which is what we're looking at right now. I'm going to put that, I want to kind of maybe split this into three, three map frames and have actually each map on each one. Okay. So if I go here again and say, uh, zoom to layer on that one, that gives me my full map on there. Okay. And again, if I want to make more map frames, I'm going to end up having to actually reproduce my map. And so what I like doing is I like making the map um, as nice as I want it and then then using the copy paste features and the art catalog to actually create all the maps that I want and so if I go into um, into my art catalog and my projects you can see here I have my maps and right now I only have one and the map that we used here right now was um, <clears throat> I used the Robinson projection so I'm gonna call this one Robinson but what I can do is actually copy this and then paste it and actually make the, the map three times and then go and change the projection on each map and then show it in my final, um, oh shoot, that's not what I want to do. Um, so I go ahead and delete that one. I did messed up on my paste. Um, yes. Okay. Now here, let me paste. Great. And so now this one here, I want to call it, for example, Albers. And this one, I'm going to call it Mercator. Remember, changing the names doesn't change the projection. So I'm going to have to actually go into those individual maps. So I'll open up Mercator. Let's see, open. And I want to also go here and open up Albers. Great. And actually, when I'm in those maps now, I'm going to go through and um, make the uh, projections changed. So I'm going to go here to properties and I want to choose that equal area Albers. Remember I saved it earlier. So I hit OK. Now it's an equal area Albers. Uh, remember from my selection, I can always go over to my map and clear the selected features. You need to clear these selected features because if not, that blue outline actually exports with your map. Um, and I'm going to go to Mercator and I'm going to do the same thing here. But this time, remember right now we're in Robinson. Just because we named it Mercator doesn't mean it changed it. It's still Robinson. So now I'm going to choose that Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere. So I go ahead and do that. And I'm also going to clear my selected feature. So I clear that out. And now if I go and look at my map layout, I can go add those two other maps in there. And so I'm going to add in now the um, Mercator. And I'm going to try to draw this the same size. Okay, there. And then um, I'm going to also go ahead and add in my Albers. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead here and make it about the same size as well. Great. Now, if remember, if I go onto each one of those maps um, and actually go and say um, zoom. Um, to the layer on the base map, it's going to end up giving me the whole world. So I can just do that. And it's kind of nice because you really see the conical projection very nicely there. Um, zoom to the layer here. And so now I can really see the Mercator projection as well. One thing that I don't like about um, ArcGIS Pro base maps is that when you use them, you get these obnoxious um, things going on here, um, saying the source information which is, you know, it just goes way too far. Um, oh man. So even in my layout view, I'm having trouble zooming in and out. This one thing that also ArcGIS Pro kind of uh, gives me problems all the time is that it is constantly making me um, lose my my <laughs> place. It's very sensitive on this on the, the zoom, the scroll zoom. So anyways, um, if I go here, I want to get rid of this. And the way I'm going to get rid of that is that I'm going to insert in a dynamic text and I'm going to choose the service layers credits that pulls that off the map. 
and I'm gonna just throw it over here. You see, I pulled it off the map, put it here. If I delete that, it goes right back. So see if I delete, um, delete, it goes right back to it. So I need to actually just leave it there. But by putting it off the map, it actually puts it into this text box, text box that doesn't get printed. So that's your little trick around um, around Esri base map, um, the crediting that happens on there. Um, for this one, um, now I want to add in labeling. And so I'm going to say um, insert in and I'm going to choose uh, some text here. And I want to choose a text here and I'm going to call this one um, Robinson. Okay. And um, maybe I just copy this one and paste it so that way I can be somewhat consistent in my um, map layout. And so here now I have this Robinson here. Now I'm going to change that now to um, Mercator. Okay. Mercator. Great. And then I take this Robinson and bring it down. And I'm going to call this one um, Albers. Okay. Good. Great. Let's see if I can get this lined up better. Okay. Let me see if I get this one lined up better. Let's see. There we go. I like that. Good. And then Robinson. Let's go ahead and get this one lined up as well. Great. And then I want to maybe add a title. So I'm going to go ahead here and add a title. I'd be careful about adding in um, north arrows because remember our north arrow changes direction. So here, north arrow is going like that. And I'd also be careful about adding scale bars because depending on our projection, we have different scale bars as well. So I'm going to say here, um, Alaska. Okay, I like that. Maybe what else I can do is bring this whole thing down a little bit. Give me some space. So maybe I can do a subtitle. Why not? Huh? Subtitle that and call it a study of area or something. A So you can see my um, my subtitle now went off of the page, and that's that's okay because I'm just going to make it smaller. I can either click here and make it smaller. Another thing is I can go here to text symbols and change the um, the appearance, and then from there it'll give me the option to change the size. Right now you see it's at 37 font. Maybe I put a 24 font. That might be better. So let's hit okay. I think that works. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and. Make that here. Great. Good. And then um, now I can add in my information that, you know, my area sizes and so forth. So you can see here I have this information that I want to take um, this one. And so I can actually just copy paste these these numbers. That's pretty cool. So um, if I click on it once, I can say here um, copy. No, not letting me get copy it. Maybe if I use my shortcut key. It'll let me copy. So this is the area of Albers. And so I can start going through and actually um, taking each one of these numbers and uh, bringing them in here. And then how many times bigger each one is. Um, let me see. Okay. So let's go here. Copy this. And let's see what happens if I click over here. Yes. Great. And then. Let's go ahead and copy this and I click into here. Okay. And then um, what I can go is actually fix this. I'm going to say this um, Alaska. And then square meters. And if I wanted to, I can also go through here and um, add in the commas. Okay. 
maybe I should have done this in uh, in square kilometers, huh? <laughs> that would have been funny. Uh, that may be smarter move, but we're already we're already committed, so we're just gonna stick with it. Square meters, and then go ahead here. A lot of times, these design designing the maps and so forth is just all about commitment. You know, about once you make it a certain way, you just gotta stay the same. Um, and then I can put here times. Maybe I do like as a se separate line, and then this one. Remember my calculation that I did two point five times bigger. So I can put here. Alaska is 2.5 times bigger than Texas. Great. Now, if I go that, remember that was with Albers, so I'm going to put that underneath the Albers one. Okay. Now, to be consistent again, it's probably better to um, copy this and paste it. And then I go through and separate and change out each number. I just gotta remember, you know, keep track which ones I've changed, which ones I haven't changed, because you don't want there to be um, bad information on it. So make sure you get the the changes uh, correct. Let's see if I get this. You want you want them to also be kind of in the same um, spot. So let's see here. Um, try to, you know, if I I can be better about this honestly, and not try to just you know kind of free free eye it um, free hand it but uh, and actually use guidelines and so forth uh, that's you know if I want to get a real good professional look I would have to do that but um, right now I guess biggers can't be choosers because I want to finish this video and I'm sure that at your point you're probably if you're following along want to finish this lab so anyways here if I click here I can copy that and then I go back over here. Let's see. Uh oh. Not responding. You always gotta watch out for that. Oh man, fingers crossed. Okay. Whew. Okay, just an error on the clipboard. Okay, so whatever. Uh, maybe I hit save on this. Good time to save the project. Okay. Um, so, anyways, I go here. Let's try this again. Copy. Then I go over here and I want to paste to here. Okay, and then again with the commas. Remember consistency. Okay, and then we go over to Texas and copy. And then we're gonna go ahead and paste it here to this is the part of the of GIS map making where you're like I already got all the analysis done I know the answer and stuff and I just want to be done with this you got to stop slow down here keep working because you want to have a good result and it requires you to just actually spend a little bit more time on it if you want a good looking map so it's unfortunate but that's the case and now we're going to go here with Robinson only two more to go so here, um, and paste, great. And then um, let's go and put those commas in. Remember, we don't wanna stay consistent. Great, and then um, the last one. So I'm just using Control C to copy that. And then control V to paste it in. Okay, drop the commas in there. And then we know that this one was uh, 3.4 times, I believe. 3.4 times bigger. Bigger than Texas. Oh man, what did I do? Okay, uh, zoom on my layout, the full thing. Give my map a quick look through, make sure I like it. I think I like it. If I wanted, I could add more uh, information in there. You know, for example, I could put a final write-up at the bottom. 
or I can maybe add in like this is the best uh, so forth but I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a PDF now so I hit save save out my full project I go over to share and I hit the export on the layout and now I have my TX AK and um, go ahead and export that PDF that's exporting now if I go back to my folder when that exports done I'll be able to open that up remember it might show up here looking like saying oh it's Google Chrome document it's just because I use Google Chrome to open my PDF I could open up with a PDF reader and it won't it won't have that look anymore um, so it says export complete oh it looks like um, I put it in my old folder <laughs> I put it in the wrong folder um, so here I can go ahead and uh, fix that uh, by clicking here and actually going up to my GIS and uh, going to my uh, actual folder that I'm working in this one my home folder and save it here okay it's going to export that okay let's check it out you see how it showed up here and it shows like Google Chrome again because I'm just using Google Chrome to read my PDF and so here's my map so it showed up uh, let's zoom in on it see make sure we like it you can see part of Alaska showing up over here um, I think actually my problem with the map maybe is that huge wide boundaries I mean too big or something so so then consider oh also I can see here little gray lines for my um, states I wasn't expecting that but um, you know if I wanted to put a second pass through here I'd probably reduce the size of the that white border that's uh, good and then here I have my information just double check everything looks good I usually like looking over my PDF one last time because if something is a problem it's better to fix it before you send it so um, anyways now that I'm happy with it and I'm done I'm done what I learned here I learned Alaska is bigger than Texas that the Mercator projection makes Alaska nine point something times bigger when act in actuality it's 2.4 times bigger so be careful whenever you're calculating areas and that you use the appropriate projection to calculate areas a good projection to calculate areas in is the Albers projection that's very close to geodesic uh, calculation we also learned that ArcGIS Pro does geodesic area calculations which are pretty awesome so keep that in mind as an option whenever you're measuring area finally if you're doing a global display you of course everyone's used to Mercator but there's other options out there like Robinson where you don't have as much of a projection that's uh, being exaggerated and it's actually maybe a little bit closer to reality to say a compromise projection and um, and that's it so I hope you like this if you make a better map than me send it over let's check it out it'd be kind of cool to see what you've done and uh, have a good day